In life, you're always faced with hard decisions. For example, let's say you and your friend was at war and he's been injured. They're still alive and they're still breathing, but you can tell that they're not gonna make it. Would you let them lie there suffering, barely being able to breathe, or would you grab a gun and end their misery? Now remember, this was a person you went to battle with. This was a person that you ate with at the lunch table. This is a person that told you their hopes and dreams of what they want to do after the war. Do you have the resolve to take all that away from them? This is one of the tough decisions that our main character, Shine Nozen, has to make in 86. And he decided that he'd rather take them out of their misery than let them try to struggle and survive. Which again, they wouldn't have lasted too much longer. And because of this, he was titled as the Grim Reaper in an anime called 86. Now, as for me, I can't comprehend the amount of strain that would put on a person. Because we all can say that, oh, you know, I'd rather take my friend out of misery. But until you're in that situation, until you're on that field, until you have something in your hands to end their life, I'm not so sure if it's that easy of a decision. It just makes me feel horrible to just imagine the fact that I have to be the one to do this, that I have to be the one to end all their dreams. Just imagine that, and I'm pretty sure you guys feel the same way. Or at least I hope it does, because if it doesn't, then I don't know. That's something, that's something with you. That's a whole nother conversation we gotta have. Now you may be asking, why was Shine put in this position to be doing the Grim Reaper's work? Well, this is because of the war. He was forced to fight on the behalf of the Republic of San Magnolia. Now, the Republic on the surface is a great place and cares about its people very genuinely. At least, that's what it wants you to believe. In reality, the Republic is at war with the Gideon Empire, which has now just become basically the Legion, which pretty much means that like these robots now kind of fight on their own and they're kind of controlled by an AI. But later on in the anime, we start to learn about the Legion and like who they are, what they're doing, all that kind of stuff. It's actually, they're actually really intensive group. However, the Republic of San Magnolia also says, and I quote, they are fighting with fully automatic robots and there is no humans involved. Meaning that there'll be no deaths coming from this war and all just be broken machines. And we learn very quickly that this is not the case. Now in reality, the Republic does not care about their people like at all. They're basically only in it for one thing and that's Alba Supremacy, which is basically one race that rules the entire country. Unlike our counterparts, which is the group called 86. These people have been pushed to poverty because of the Republic. And they are now forced to fight this war. And since they're not Alba, they don't care about them at all. And they pretty much act like their lives don't matter. So in a way, the higher ups really do see it as a no death war. Which, I'm not gonna hold you man, that's just fucked up. The fact that these guys are forced to fight a war for people that don't even consider them people. It shows how terrible people can be in the harshness of war. Because I'm pretty sure there's only two people above the age of 18. So you're pretty much sending children to their deaths. Which, the minds of people. You can't fight your own war and you're making children fight it for you. Let that sink in. These guys didn't have a childhood and they're not gonna have an adulthood because they're about to get put six feet under. Like, it's just a shame. But this is how Shin finds himself in the position he's in. He's a child soldier forced to fight a war that's not his. He's extremely talented and probably the best fighter there is in the entire military of the Republic. He takes it upon himself to make sure that all his fellow soldiers can make it to peace. Which pretty much means... Hi! If he finds someone in pain after battle that will likely die, he kills them. Just so that they won't be in pain anymore and they can find peace. And that's how Shin gets the name of Grim Reaper. Sending people to the afterlife. Which honestly makes him very admirable, however it does causes him a lot of pain. As the story kind of leads on, he gets more and more numb to a lot of things and you start to see that. I mean, Shin literally has to kill his friends. I mean, imagine if you were at war and you know, your friend beside you is basically like crying out because he's down, you know, he's gonna die. I mean, are you not gonna put him out of his misery or are you gonna let him suffer till the end pretty much? He's already scared to death though because of his brother. He went clinically insane because of everything that he went through and I don't want to get too much into it because it says spoilers, but you know. As Shin cares so much about his brother, this makes him feel a terrible amount of pain and makes him think that it's his fault for what happened to his brother. This man has gone through so much pain. I'm talking more than Kaneki, I'm talking more than, than even pain himself. That is just a code. This world shall know pain. This man has been through it all, and especially that he's in war too, like, oh, the stress is crazy. But through it all, we begin to see him develop. He actually starts to have emotion and care about things when they die. And this is one of the true beauty parts of 86 as a whole. Regardless of what's happening and what people are going through, they still find small bits of happiness to grab onto, which allows them to slowly start to come out of his shell. The main cast even helped with this with their new appointed leader. All right, so this is Lena. She actually helps him grow to understand that not everyone outside of them is bad. She tries to help them and not just use them like most of the characters. Lena is a cool character for the most part. She does have an annoying savior mindset for the 86 though that does force politics down your throat. 
and kind of makes it a little bit cringy, to be honest with you. A6 is the best war anime out there and will most likely stay at the top because there's only a couple animes that can compete with it like Tanya the Devil. But the way they psychologically show the effects of war and what people have to go through in the politics and how everybody sees the war in itself, there's no anime that comes close to it. All the events that you're seeing are realistic and most likely have happened in war. I mean, besides, you know, the whole robots fighting each other part. At least to my knowledge, I'm not seeing any Gundams fight. And something else I like about this anime is how they show the PTSD that everybody has. Because they do have a little bit of free time between the fights. However, they can't take their minds off the war. They know that they're probably going to be dying soon and then they just, they can't be at peace. There's always going to be that tense, that edge that they're going to have. At this point, they can't even grasp the concept of a vacation. There's only one reason why a person wouldn't like this anime. And that is because of the mechs. So which I'm not sure if it's just this thing in the anime community, but when they see a person inside a robot, they flip out. Like, Nani, a man is in a robot. He's controlling the world. He, he's, he's, he's not using his fist to fight. Like, what? Like, they just can't grab the concept. Bro, relax. You see people in machines every day. Like, how do you think they do construction? They're moving the controls, my guys. So instead of building bridges, they're fighting each other. There is zero reason why you should let Mech stop you from watching this anime. And in all honesty, it's not as deep as how they have it in Gundams. I say it's like 20 or 30% in the anime. The other 70% they're outside the suits. And for the people who are able to watch mech animes, this will be on the top five of your anime list of all time. This is on my top five favorite animes. And if you want to be on my top five favorite subscribers, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, you feel me? And Dojo, out!